Good morning, guys. Time for coffee talk. Got my coffee. I'll tell you what, I need it. It's early on Sunday. Been a, been a bit of a ship show here in the old household with uh, some minor medical issues, but it's been uh, not me personally, but it's been uh, taking up a bit of our <laughs> bit of our week and is still ongoing. So pretty quick for today. I definitely need this coffee. Got a great coffee cup here for one of you guys. It says, uh, let's show it here. It's probably bad lighting. And on the 8th day God created the Air Force because even the Army needs heroes <laughs> that's fantastic even the Army needs heroes I had a great there was a great saying in the the JTAC community air power when you're all out of HUA <laughs> anyway we won't bash the Army we'll we'll not get into the Air Force Army bashing right now other than to drink from this fantastic cup very good uh, what are we going to do today? Standard stuff. We'll uh, do some channel news. We'll talk about that. Look at the missions and specials that are out right now. We'll take a look at some subjects du jour. Lots of new tanks, new premiums and reward tanks floating around out there. So I've gathered up the list that I know of right now. I'll kick that out and how you get those tanks as far as what I know anyway right now. Frontline's been rebalanced. How's it been going? I'll talk a little bit about my experience with Frontline. And then we got a, a forum post of the week, which is actually going to come from Reddit. Pretty fantastic stuff. And uh, we've also got some real shenanigans in the uh, in the uh, in the store. You're, I think you're going to enjoy this one. Uh, I might rant a little bit, but let's move on. Here we go. All right, channel news. First things first. I'm planning. I hope to stream on Tuesday, but again, this medical thing has got us all going in various directions. So we'll see if that happens. I'm hoping it'll be from nine to twelve ish if that happens, so no promises. I'm sure you'll all be crushed and been crying and everything, so just try to get a support dog or a support blanket or something and <laughs> just power your way through it. Anyway, you can see that I've got the 3045 right here. And uh, I'm chasing the three mark on it. And I'll have the I'll have the game, or at least part of the game, on Miserable Monday. But I got to 94.69 or so, or 64, something like that, six something, and then had a zero damage game, and then proceeded to from there drop it back down to about 90 point, 92.5. So <laughs> the struggle is real and ongoing. Interesting thing about this tank right here is that people do really well in it. We've been digging in a little bit into the WTR ratings, the World of Tank, World of T World. Yeah, World of Tanks rating. If you go into here and look at this, usually about 5,500 here at the Hawk 12. I've got it at 55 and I'm 7th. This is 51 and 20th, so a little bit lower. But if we go over here to where I've been working on the, the Chrysler's at 10th, or it's at 5,500. So if you click on the Chrysler, kick on the Chrysler, look at this, 6,300. So it's even harder to get nice and high up in the ratings. But 5,500 is typically enough to be in the top 10. Now I've got the 3045M at 54, and much like the Chrysler K, not quite as high, but 59 is at the top 57. Even to be in the top 10, you've got to have 56 and a half. So that's interesting. What I've been seeing then is 5,000 is kind of that break point to get towards the top 10, depending on the tank, or top 20, I'd say. 5,500 will pretty well get you in most tanks near the top 10 or in it. But some, some tanks that are very good, you're going to find people doing really well in. I thought I'd throw that out for you guys. The other thing for channel news is I'm going to finish up my King Tiger C missions. Remember to do those. We'll talk about that in the missions a little bit later, so I'll be playing that. And then I've played some Frontline. My Frontline experience, we're going to get into that a little bit later on as well. I almost stopped playing Frontline this episode. It just really got very grindy and, and irritating. What I'm finding though with it is I do pretty poorly at the beginning as I try to stop doing pub things and start to try to remember how to do frontline things and then eventually by the end of it I start getting more majors and generals and things like that but early on it's captains and the occasional major sometimes lieutenant which is very irritating and you, it's like anything once you get going again I start to learn what I need to do and I'll talk a little bit about the changes and 
and what I found on Frontline as far as this episode because they did some major things to it that I thought were interesting. And my assumptions about what about how that would play were a little bit wrong. Weird, huh? Well, I was a little bit wrong. All right, let's look at the missions and specials. It's time to shill for Wargaming, but you, <laughs> I think you're going to love one of these things in particular because I know I did. All right, let's get our shill on. Come on, let's go. This is how I make my money, right? Isn't that right? The, the CCs are shills, and every time somebody buys something, uh, there's a, a ding in heaven, an angel gets their wings, and I get a bunch of money. So that's how it works. <laughs> that's, that's not how it works at all. Not, none of that is actually true. All right, I want you to notice... The 12,000 gold for $51. Plus, I have a coupon, so it's going to be a little bit more. Just just notice that. All right. Actually, is that before the bonus, or or do I actually get more off? No, that, that takes into account the the coupon. All right. So, notice that 12,000 gold, just keep that in the back of your mind. 12,000 gold is worth 51, 51.69. There's quite a few different things here in Featured. This is interesting. Does it show it? And I'll talk about it in a minute. But the unskinned. German duo, the Marbrecker and the Rhine Metal Scorpion, are on sale as a duo. You can get those for eighty-four bucks. Lorraine Kanon Jagdpanzer, Kanonen, Kanonen Jagdpanzer. The Kanonen Jagdpanzer eschews um, camo. So, <laughs> hey, where's the Panther camo I made fun of? That doesn't seem to be there anymore. <laughs> I wonder if they sold any of that. I was really happy. <clears throat> Goodness, great. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Must be going through puberty again, or it's too early. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Like I said, it's been a long week, man. I mean, it has been a long, long week. I know that's... I'm not whining necessarily. It's just a fact. <laughs> and I have to mow the lawn today. And it is, it is, as the kids say, literally 95 degrees. And something like 107 with the with the humidity factor thrown in. The old feels like 107 kind of thing. All right. Yeah, yeah. Move on, Guido. Got it. Noted. Okay, so we got gold. Now this is this is the special part. Remember remember just a moment ago I said 12,000 gold. I didn't even say it. It was there. I said but what I did say was look at the 12,000 gold for $51, right? 12,000 gold for $51. Well, you could you can get three of a kind. For thirty nine bucks, just ten dollars less, and you can have three thousand gold and three million credits. <laughs> what is the math for their credits? Are you actually kidding me? Forty bucks. Forty bucks for three thousand gold and three million credits, and then forty nine bucks, fifty same price for four thousand gold. That's eight thousand less. But hey, no worries, you get four million credits. Four million credits won't even buy you a tier ten. <laughs> Are you actually freaking kidding me, Wargaming? This, this is ridiculous. I I haven't paid too close of attention of, to how they're monetizing their silver. That's outrageous. I will I will warn you off of that. Five ways to Sunday. I usually say, nearly every time we talk about it, what you do with your money is is your thing. Please do not buy that ridiculous package. Are you actually kidding me? <laughs> That's... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I get in trouble for that, you know? Scoffing it. But come on, man. Is that... So I'm going to start paying attention to it. You guys may know, because I'm, I'm sure there are a bunch of you out there who have paid attention to it. Is that is that the actual correct monetization for their silver? And if it is, Wow. Wow, I know I don't have a problem making silver. I run a premium account. I have premium tanks. That's part of the deal. Um, if you want to advance in the game faster, then that's what you do. A lot of you guys may be free to play, so silver is is, is much more uh, valuable, I guess. But then you're free to play, so why would you drop forty bucks just to get three million silver when you could drop I don't know how much. Um, what does 40 bucks get you in a premium account? Let's find out. Now, you don't get the gold, but 40 bucks would get you a 90 days. And you could make 30 million silver in 90 days just playing the game that you like. <laughs> I mean, it's. You'd even have $7 left over if you threw it. Let's say you just got uh, 
14 days, and you bought $20 of gold. Well, where would you be then? You'd have 14 days of premium, and you wanted to buy some gold, so we'll go over here, and you had 20 bucks left over. This is map in public, so I'm screwing it up, but you understand what I'm talking about. Where's my, uh, where's my any amount? Am I not allowed to buy any amount anymore? What happened? Uh, whoa. It was here just a moment ago. There it is. Okay, found it. So, there you go. 4,000 gold for your 20 bucks, right? There you go. 19, 28, 20 bucks. You get 4,000 gold. You get, what was it, 14 days of premium. And you can make, I don't know how much you make in 14. Say a million a day if you have some time to play. Say 500,000 500, a day if you're not great. Do that math. 14, that's 7 million. <laughs> Plus the premium stuff. The, the premium missions now that you get, all the other things, the extra silver on top, right? There's 50,000 on the first one of the day or whatever it is. There's another 50 a day just for playing a game. I, I, I know we've gone off the rails on this, but are you actually kidding me, man? To which the monetization goes, no, I'm, uh, I'm not actually kidding you. Not, uh, not in the least. We, bought, we sell the fool out of those things. <laughs> You know, they probably do. There's whales that will just go, I can't be bothered. I'm going to buy that. I'll buy three. <laughs> I need 12 million. Give me three. <laughs> oh, man. $120 later, they're good to go. All right. If that's you, then I'm not talking to you, right? Clearly, at, the, at that point, you've got so much money. It just simply does not matter what I'm talking about. For the rest of us, nuts. It's nuts, I tell you. Nuts. Schmaltrum. Kanonen. Lorraine 40T, Liberté. These are all pretty good frontline vehicles, which is why they're on sale right now. This is what I wanted to note. I saw I saw something. I, I was just glancing through some, some stuff, and it said VK168.01. I said, wait a minute. There's a brand new German tank out there I don't know about, but that's actually the unskinned version of the Marbrecker. <laughs> that's, that was the numerical de designation. So it doesn't have that Marbrecker, wall breaker, camo on the side. It's you can put whatever camo you want. So they're selling it unskinned, essentially. BT-7's out there. That's a funny little tank. Great big old derp gun. Pretty mobile. Very, very inaccurate. I don't know what its dispersion is, but it's massive. And a few various other tanks right there. And we get into specials, and I think that's pretty much it. I think we're done shilling. We're done beating up on the full house and the four of a kind, and three of a kind, of the three of a kind, four of a kind... Wait a minute. <laughs> I forgot about this. Because this shows up on the uh, on the specials. <laughs> okay, so say you are in the market for buying silver and gold. All right, you got, you got a bunch of money. You really need to buy that tier. It's only 4 million, so it's going to be a tier 9. You got to have that tier 9, or maybe you're adding 4 million to your 2. And you're going to get that tier 10, and you're like, Guido, I, I spend my money on what I want. I'm thinking, okay, fine, you do that, buddy. And uh, you come in here and go, okay, so I need, uh, I'm going to get 4 million, 4,000 gold and 4 million for 49.99 at 15% off. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get 4,000 and 5 million for 49.99. <laughs> this is so good. This is this is so automated buffoonery. Lack of attention to detail. The reason it happened, obviously, is this is twenty seven percent off, so it started a little higher. But because it's, you know, as they they do this stair step thing, if it if it costs more, it's a higher percentage off. But what they've managed to do is bring it into the same effing price. So one of them you get four and four, and the other one you get four and five for the same price. <laughs> And there it is at the top of the featured on their monetization page, the premium shop. It just looks stupid. <laughs> Did anyone look at this? It's incredible. <laughs> I'm, that was not very good shilling. I did not. I did not shill very good right there. So I might not get my check on this one. But come on, guys. Whew. All right, where are we? Where are we? We're chilling. Ah, we're going to go on to missions. Let's go on to missions and be kinder and gentler, shall we? 
All right, there is a code for the 1.5 weekend, so hopefully you've gone on the page. I'm not going to go and show you. I've done that multiple times. If Maybe I'll do it in the next couple of weeks to try to catch new people, but that's pretty easy to deal with. So if we look here, we've got player tank class right. That's good. That was a code earlier as well. So if you're not seeing that in your client, then there's a code out there you need to go get. Go find the main page and dig through it. Tankrewards.com. This is actually going pretty well for me. I have 1,100 of the 1,300. And if you know, you can get two, four, six, seventy of these stamps a day, and it doesn't take too long before you're getting some pretty good rewards. Word on the street right now from the forums is you are getting the gold for the tank. All right, remember I mentioned earlier that it was told to me you will not get silver or gold for the tank. As of right now, people are getting the gold for the tank if they own it. So obviously you get it if you don't own it, but if you already own it right now. You may want to strike while the iron is hot if you've got the points. I'm kind of curious. I'm going to go try to see what happens here. This is a, a another PR black eye in the making if they take away the gold halfway through this. So I think somebody screwed up. They left it in the system for gold. People are getting gold for it right now. I don't know if that's going to hold. It will be very interesting to see what they do, right? The right thing for them to do... So what you do now, Wargaming, this is very easy. You advertise it immediately. Look, this was not meant to be gold or silver. We're going to leave the gold in this time. Next time, it won't be like this. It's our mistake, and then it's taken care of. We know why it happened. We don't necessarily need to know all the internal details. It doesn't matter. And you do the right thing and say, look, if you're going to continue through this and get it, then you'll get the gold. No skin off your teeth. Everybody's happy. A little happy mistake was made, but we also know what the expectation is for next time. Right now it's Cricketsville, as usual, and I have the really bad feeling that somewhere in the next few days it's going to get cut off. <laughs> and then the... Anyway, well, let's see what happens. I know what history says, but I hope for better. I hope for better. Echo is the uh, King Tiger C, the Tier 7, re not reward, but what you can get from the linking your Twitch to Twitch Prime to Wargaming's account. I know I just butchered that, but you know what I'm talking about. This only goes to July 1st, and I know I said in the past that these don't seem to go anywhere. I believe they're actually going to your free experience. Even though this doesn't say free experience, it says combat experience, which I, again, I'm gonna test it. I'm gonna, I just need to play the King Tiger a little bit. That'll be something I do in the next week before the 1st of July, so I've got about seven days or so, eight days. <clears throat> And when I get close to it, I'm going to see if I get 30,000 clunked onto my free experience. That'll probably not help you too much because it's going to be near the end of the week. If anyone has experience, have paid attention, experience with that experience, let me know down in the comments because I am kind of curious how that was. I'm pretty sure I looked at it the first time I tripped it and I didn't get anything on my free experience. So, But I may have missed it. I may just purely have missed it. The 54 is on track, other missions, there's nothing really going on here. The 1.5, there it is. So that's what you have to use your code or you're not getting 1.5. Remember, it's on the second battle of the day because the first one's your standard times two. And then the premium missions, this is what I was talking about earlier about the whole math thing. There you go, it is 50,000 credits. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to get off. We're not going to, we're not launching back off into that. You, nice try, guys. We're not doing it, though. That's it for missions and specials. Let's move on. Before we go, I did want to mention that there is a trade-in event going on right now. There is an article on the main page for that. There are certain tanks you can trade in, certain you cannot. There's a short list of what you cannot trade in and mostly everything else you can trade. The not trade-in tend to be special reward tanks of various kinds. The trade-in stuff is just about any premium and most of the premiums that you have been rewarded. One of the things that's on the list you can't trade in is you can't sneak around get their, uh, well, I don't know, you pay money for it anyway, but like a T44100 FL, the frontline version, you can't use that to trade in half its gold for some other tank. The, basically, the trade-in deal is you get half the gold of the tank you're trading in put towards a new tech tree tank, and it has to be a tech tree tank. I would show you this, but I don't have any tech tree gold tanks that I don't own right now, so I can't really show you how it works. The other thing you cannot do is you cannot trade in two or three tanks and, and make the whole full the whole full, make the full gold value of the one that you want. You can only trade in one, get half its gold value, and then that goes against the, the new tank you are trading in for, and you've got to have the gold otherwise to get the tank. So there you go. I've showed that in the past. 
but unfortunately I don't have any way to show you today. So do it if you want. Alright, we've got a bunch of new premiums coming out for various things. Some reward tanks, some just being thrown out there. Otherwise, a couple of them I don't know how we're going to get them, but they're, they're coming because they're showing up in the files for the game. So the first thing is the French Tier 6 Premium, which is, as you can see, a Panther. So a French Panther. This one's the, we'll take a look at here. This is on Harkonnen's blog. Highly recommended. The Bretain Panther. Breton, I don't know how you say that, but we'll say Bretain. We'll Americanize it from America. The Bretain, Bretain Panther. And it is a Panther Aus A. Now the Poodle, the Poodle, which the Polish one, is the Aus G. This one is the A, so an earlier model. A tier six. It's going to be roughly like a Poodle. I suppose there'll probably be a number or two different just to make it a little bit uh, interesting. But that bad boy is coming up there's no indication on how we're going to get that we zing down here and we have two others super test as a t54 e2 which is showing up as a in here as a tier 8 and I wanted to see is this the same tank AE phase 1 which may must this may must be two different tanks I thought they were the same tank but they're not so let's go back to here. We'll just stick with this one for now. So T54E2, unknown how you get this one. But this is a tier 8 heavy tank for the Americans. You can see it's got quite a big tumor up on the top right there. I'm not going to go through the numbers, but that guy's coming. Unknown how you get this one at the moment. Then if we go over to stash report, we have a tier 9 American heavy tank. The AE phase 1. Yeah, this is definitely a different tank. This one has two different tracks on it, which is kind of interesting. Hard to see right here, but... They're actually separated on their own sprockets front and back. As of right now, there's no separate game mechanic for that. You lose the track on one that's immobilized. So it doesn't change anything other than the look of the tank. It's going to be interesting to see the wheels move and the different tracks and all that cool stuff. So that one is the Frontline Reward Tank, I believe. Or maybe it was this. No, that's sorry. That's this 50T is the Frontline Reward Tank. Or sorry. I'm screwing this up. Ranked Battles Reward Tank. Ranked Battles Reward Tank. Remember the Ranked Battles that we had canceled? My understanding is with this tank, with the German 50T, that we will be able to somehow access this in some other event, we being NA, okay, the NA server. Since we didn't have Ranked Battles, they have told us that we will have some other way to access this tank. I know that the community guys have said they're trying to finalize whatever that is. I have no SA of what it's supposed to be, but who knows. It's going to be interesting because it's a tier 9, I believe. Yes, a tier, that's that's a pretty big reward tank. So whatever the event is, it's going to have to be fairly serious. Grindy, if it's a grinding event, I, I don't know. Very interesting. So we'll wait and see what comes of that. Unknown where this tier 9 American Heavy is coming in. I don't remember if it says anything. Yeah, it doesn't say anything right there. So we got those guys. There's a lot, man. There is also a Skoda T27 that got some nerfs. I don't know if there's a picture. There's no picture of what that is. So there's another premium tank out there. And there's one other. I don't know if it's on this one. Dun, 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 dun. Well, now we're not now we're not getting what I want. Anyway, there's also a a British Black Prince prototype, which is a tier six British heavy premium tank. The point of all that is there's a bunch of them in several different ways that we're going to get them. I don't know if there's a picture of the Black Prince on this one. This is Rita's blog. No, not seeing it right there. Anyway, it, it was on one of those. So lots of different premium tanks coming out, a couple different ways to get it. The Panther, the French Panther is going to be connected to Tank Fest, so I expect some way to get that in the fairly near future because that's happening this summer, I want to say in the next few weeks or so, in Europe. So hopefully that bleeds over to us and we have a way to get that Panther as well, whether it's just sold or there's a little mission or something for it, I don't know. The Frontline Reward, or not, I keep saying Frontline Reward, but the Rank Battles Reward, again, we should get some essay on how we're going to be able to win that German tank fairly soon. And then, oh, that's right. That's why I'm screwing it up. That's why I'm completely screwing it up. 
There's a frontline reward, and, a, and the German one's a ranked battles reward. There you go. I'm crossing the streams. They told me to never cross the streams, right? You got that from Ghostbusters. Never cross the streams. <laughs> okay. Wow, did I really blow that? What do, I, what do we got here? Let's see. There it is. This one, ranked battles. All right, so the German Tier 9 is the ranked battles one. The American Tier 9 is the... front line <laughs> the front line the tier 9 front line reward holy cow that was really hard to get to that point you know that but that's pretty indicative of what uh, of what this week has been probably said that word wrong but I don't care I'm calling it indicative and I'm going to eschew looking up the meaning of it that see I'm starting to get very uh, starting to get very uh, uh, What's a word I'm looking for? See, this this is bad. This is what happens when you do stuff live because you can't think of a word. Uh, controversial. No. Very argumentative. That's not the word I wanted, but it is the, the idea that I'm becoming very argumentative with you guys. Contrary, if you will. Contrary. Where were we? What were we talking about? We were talking about t the tanks that are coming up. So there's a lots of them. I think I sort of sorted that out. <laughs> At the end, what I should do is just delete this particular segment and redo it. But I'm not going to because I have stuff to do. Man, I have stuff to do. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So, front line, front line, front line. Been an interesting ride on that. I started off playing heavies. I thought, hey, the heavies have three of those reserve slots now. If you look at it, we'll find a heavy here. Maybe, there we go. They now have three, not scouts. Scouts now have one. That's quite a change. I thought, well, the heavies will then be able to kind of an airstrike, an artillery. I'll give them engineering. I understand that getting on the cap or decapping is the way to go. A heavily armored heavy seems like it, it would be good. The problem with that is they're just not flexible enough. So really, even though they the mediums lost some of that, they act, the medium actually picked up an extra one of these slots. I think the medium won overall. The medium, I believe, only had one slot. Maybe it had two, but I believe it was only one. Now it has two. You can put engineering and maybe a strike or a spotting plane or something that'll get you a little more XP. The Progetto is still one of the best auto loader. It's got the Italian auto loader. It's nice and mobile. The gun is accurate enough with decent enough pen that it can do the job. Because the maps are so wide open, you can get some flanking shots even on the heavily armored stuff. So really, the, the heavies, even though they got a little bit of a boost with that, are really still not the class of the of the mode. It's, it's mediums and scouts. Now, even though scouts lost two of their slots, they still do their scout thing. They're still able to rage around. The guns are good enough to do damage. They get lots of assist if you're playing it right. So really, at the end of the day, for front lines, I don't think a whole lot has changed. I don't believe that the attacker has as much of an advantage as they used to. I've seen a lot more battles get further in towards the end and wins happening more in the last five minutes or so. I only had a couple instances where they ended really quickly. So I think the changes to the turrets have helped a little bit. And I also think the defenders have a little easier time winning on occasion. But again, I've gone through this a lot. The mode is about farming a bunch of a bunch of frontline prestige points and you want to do that by ranking up and you only really rank up really well by playing as long as possible to crank up the damage so that is still there still part of the game but it looks like interestingly some of the changes they've made have, have helped to do that meaning that the games last a little bit longer they're not quite as fast the fast tanks can still get into the backfield but they don't seem to be able to take down the turrets as fast or as easily as they used to be able to so maybe I'm gonna make a cautious, I'll make a cautious um, kudo, I guess, to Wargaming that I think they they moved it in the right direction. They definitely appear to have moved it in the right direction. Like I mentioned earlier though, when I started, it just, it becomes a, a huge grind. That's a personal problem, some people love it. So good on you, have at it. For me, it's become the same, same. It's all about mobile, medium tanks. I like to play heavies on occasion. They don't really have a place in front line. They can if you get lucky and you're on the right part of the map and you're able to push and, and cap and move on to the next cap. But if 
everybody takes their fast tanks and changes zones from you, you're 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 screwed. There's not a whole bunch you can do. You just have to either run in and die and get a new tank and go somewhere else, which is part of the part of the mode. I mean, that's something that you do. That's part of the game mechanic. So whining about that being a game mechanic and then not doing it, that's that's a personal problem again. Still, it's it's sort of irritating, to be quite honest. So what I did is after sucking quite a bit at Lieutenant and Captain, I played three games of Artie. <laughs> or maybe four. <laughs> I got I want to say three majors and a captain. The captain one was only because the game ended too early. One of the ones that were they really actually fast. I call it fast cap, but it's not fast cap, right? Fast destroy the turrets. But it's already is so easy in this mode. So, so easy. It still is. Even having taken away two of its slots, I just put another artillery strike and used that. And uh, it's, it's just dumb. It, especially on defense, it is dumb. Got back into that and went, I'm bored with the artillery, so I jumped back in and I went mediums and light tanks and all of a sudden I'm getting majors and generals. You can see though that I'm only prestige four and at tier 22 or rank or whatever they call it. So I haven't even gone to, because this is the fifth episode, if I'm on track I should be at five and I've still got at least a third maybe closer to half of the ranking up to do because it gets harder and harder each each tier, right? So I don't know. I'm not I'm on the fence. I'm not sure I'm gonna finish frontline. I mean I, I was given the Emil fifty one to do content, so as far as that goes, I'm lucky. Other people are gonna have to grind to do it. Whether I'm gonna get the tier nine, I don't know. I would imagine it's possibly not, because that is a pretty big a pretty big deal to get all the way to the end and just maybe they'll give them to the cc's i don't know we'll find out as we go so that's just something i have to kind of figure out whether i'm going to try to whether i'm going to try to push all the way to the end of this thing and right now i'm losing steam i don't know let me know how you guys are feeling about frontline down below i know i have had a bunch of a bunch of comments from some of you saying i'm not even bothering just it's too grindy i don't like it um i don't know I'm really on the fence with this one. Uh, on the one hand, I like it to some extent. The large wide open map, the ability to flex around, not as constrained, it's not as much of a funnel, although in certain places it is pretty much a funnel. But you can move from side to side, you can have some fun. I have on occasion just taken my scout and rage into the back and just mess with people. It, <laughs> that reminded me in one in particular. There was this poor guy who was in a Suma SM. I was driving one of the wheeled tanks. I think the Lynx. I'm raging around in the Lynx, and he starts following me into the backfield. I'm, I kill his artillery off, and I start raging around. And uh, I, I mess with that guy for like five, eight minutes. <laughs> Just I'd run off till I was not seen, and he'd be lumbering around in his Suma. I'd circle around, then I'd backtrack, and I'd show, shoot him a couple times, and I'd run off. <laughs> And he, he chased me the whole time. I, I just, I mean, it was doing no good for either one of us, but I had to laugh. It was one of the funnier things I'd done in a long time in this game. All right, that is the uh, rebalance work. So I think overall they've done a pretty good job. Let me know what you think, though. For me, it seems like it's a little more balanced and better. Although I do have to mention, at first it wasn't. There was a couple bugs that were really game-breaking. The spotting bug where you remained completely spotted up. You, if you watch my stream where I was playing Frontline, the couple games I, I was spotted continually, that was pretty funny. The uh, 150 51 or 155 51, the Lorraine Artie that kept shooting at me no matter where I was, that, that was lots of fun. Tons of fun. And then there was another bug where a scout could squeeze into buildings near the cap, one cap in particular, and then you couldn't get to him, but he was lighting up the cap. He was Since the building was on the cap, he was also keeping them from capping because he could just sit there and decap as they tried. So that, I think those both got patched. I think those go about both, bah -bah. both got patched. All right, let's move on. Let's get this thing done. Because we're going to go forum post of the week, but it's going to come from Reddit. So every now and again, I, I stoop down to, to debate people on Reddit. And uh, I always regret it because it's, it's <laughs> one, one guy described this particular situation quite well as a, a circle jerk. Which it absolutely is. This is in relation to the whole loot box thing. I, I know that EA just came out. Remember, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the loot box thing, but EA came out and said their new loot box is a surprise mechanic or something like that. What do they call it? Hold on, let's scroll up, and it's called a uh, 
Yeah, loot boxes are just surprise mechanics. All right. So, of course, the immediately the echo chamber that is the gaming, Reddit gaming, I don't know what you call it, community or thread or whatever it is, starts going ape about this. You know, the, oh, EA's the worst company ever. They're so evil. They hate gamers. This whole thing. Now, EA has had their missteps and, and done some, some pretty silly things. But the way you deal with that is you just don't buy their stuff. But the way the internet deals with it is to, to lose their collective minds. And the bottom line for me with loot boxes, if, if you don't want to buy it, then I recommend you leave your wallet in your pocket. But there you go. Now, we, we always get into the, well, it's for the children. The children, you know, they don't know. They're spending, you know, they're spending mom and dad's money, at which point I have to ask, all right, well, how are they doing that? Because that seems like a different problem than the loot box. <laughs> but I thought this, this particular comment or quote right here encapsulated the, the thing so good for me because it, it is such a hypocritical community. It's incredible sometimes to me, the gaming community. I, I love them to death. I am one. But on the other hand, there's some really, there's some real stupidity and just boneheaded hypocrisy that makes me laugh. So I thought this was great. I wanted to share this one. <clears throat> so remember, we're talking about loot boxes and how it's, it's a, it's a unethical practice. They always, they bring this up a lot. It's unethical, right? You can't, it's gambling. It's unethical. You're, you're, you're EA. You should be above that, and you're screwing over the gamer, and it's unethical. It's immoral. <laughs> so, old Moose twelve oh seven here says, <laughs> "This is you, you just can't make this shit up." I used to pirate all games <laughs> when money was tight. Oh, that's the reason. Sorry, money's tight. Uh, I'm going to have to pirate all my games at this point. So uh, EA says, sorry, money's tight. We're going to have to make you pay for the loot box. So that's okay. All right. I know, I now, I know, I now feel comfortable paying for games. Oh, thank goodness. Well, thank, I'm, I am so happy for you that you're comfortable paying somebody for their labor. Good. Uh, and supporting devs. But FEA, that's right. That's when I didn't have money, I pirate you all day. And when I feel comfortable, then I'll give you some money. But you guys are unethical. <laughs> if I if I feel like playing a game of theirs, theirs, like their, fantastic, for whatever re whatever reason I have, I just feel like it. And if I want to pay you, I do. If I don't, then I steal it. And you're unethical. <laughs> I will not be giving my hard-earned money. Well, that's very interesting. That is very interesting because it is hard-earned when it's your money, isn't it? Yeah? It's my hard-earned money. But your money is not hard-earned, you unethical rat. <laughs> hard-earned money over to support them. I call it a surprise demo, and that makes me feel happy. <laughs> I, it, it, I don't think it's possible to find a better comment that more encapsulates the, the false rage of this whole thing. That is absolutely perfect. And then this guy, he's like, yeah, this. I hope that dirtbag company goes out of business. The good people who work there, if they're effing are any. Okay. I hope they'll get new jobs in gaming. I hope the rest of them don't and die and whatever. And F off forever. He didn't say day, but die, but F off forever. In fact, I don't want them in any industry. That's right. Because you work for EA, you don't deserve to make money and have a life. You just F off and never come back. Or on the world I'm living in. Oh, well, sorry, man. I, yeah, it's, I should not be in your world. I'm trying to sell something that may have value to people. But because you think it's unethical, but you're fine with stealing stuff, then I should not live in your world. That that makes sense. I got it, man. That's fantastic. FEA and the shoot piles who work there. <laughs> I like Caslock though. He's got it. He says... That's quite ethical. <laughs> That's boy, you nailed it there, man. I think your your ethics one hundred and one class really took hold. I think you I think you got it. You've really internalized 
the morality and, and ethical concepts that you're talking about here. <laughs> wow. Let's move on. That's incredible. I'm just sat here trying to wrap my mind around the cognitive dissonance that it takes to, to make that logic train. <laughs> I told you I'd be done with it, but I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm right back at it. All right, that's it. We're done. I hope to stream on Tuesday. We'll see what happens. Maybe later today there's an off chance on a Sunday stream. Expect to see two videos for the next week, maybe two. I have some backed up, and there's a lot of you who have asked for help, and I have those help videos. So instead of making you wait two weeks, I'm going to double stack some videos for a while until we get caught up. I do have a vacation coming up at the end of July, so I also need to uh, collect a few videos or get some videos ready for that. So we'll see. I think for at least for the next week, it'll be double video, and then we'll go back to a single video. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for stopping by. I've got lawn mowing and uh, family taking care of and all kinds of stuff, and i got to finish this coffee. So... See you later. Thanks for the mug, by the way. Appreciate it. Uh, that's it. Later.